Hello YouTube, the Preppers Pastor back with you. Hope you're doing well. I realize it's been a couple of months since I've done anything on YouTube. Haven't forgotten about it, but um, in all honesty, I have just been sitting back watching, listening, and um, I've been watching a lot of videos from a lot of people, uh, my subscribers, those. Um, I do want to come to you today and talk to you uh, from my heart. This isn't about any type of uh, prepping in general, but it does challenge you to um, look inside yourself. There have been a lot of things happen in our nation uh, since 2008. Um, a lot of things that many of us are not in approval of. Um, going uh, recently back to the election night and uh, the way um, we're disappointed, or many of us are disappointed in the way that happened. However, the majority of America spoke. Regardless of why they spoke, they spoke. And there have been a lot of what many of us see as attacks on uh, our liberties, our freedoms, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of comments have been made, and uh, many, many, many of them I agree wholeheartedly with. However, with uh, everything that goes on, um, including the latest um, developments around the Second Amendment, I do want to say the tragedy that took place in Newtown, Connecticut, uh, was uncalled. young man that went into that act was uh, acting out evil. Um, I won't really go into a lot of detail on that. I don't know what his mental state was. I, uh, I've heard and I have seen reports of um, uh, psychotic medications and things of that nature. And uh, I won't get into the medical side of it right now. But folks, Needless to say, um, it was not an act of a firearm, it was the act of an individual who went out of his way to gain access to a firearm. With that said, there are those who have an agenda to destroy the Second Amendment rights in this nation. And they have used uh, things like this to politicize their agenda. And those of us who um, are constitutionally minded we are speaking out against it. I want him a Second Amendment um, sponsor. I, I support the Second Amendment, the Constitution as a whole. I believe all of us should be sworn to protect and to defend it. Uh, with that, I want to ask you a question. What do you base your right and wrong agendas on? Every one of us has a we have a perception of right and wrong. What is your perception of right and wrong? What do you base it on? Um, I want to take just a few minutes in this video and share with you uh, my perception of right and wrong, where it comes from, and where I get my, uh, my foundations from. So um, I want to share with you a few things. First of all, my idea of right and wrong absolute. I do not believe there are gray areas. There are uh, right and wrong is based upon uh, uh, God's view of righteousness and unrighteousness. Now, where do I get that from? Well, let me show you very quickly. My Bible. I believe the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. That particular Bible I showed you was the King James Translation Bible. It was a 1769 version or a, a writing. There are typically three translations or three writings of the King James Bible. Of course, everyone is aware of the 1611. There, is, there was a 1769 rewriting because of the development of uh, the Queen's English. 
and there was another one done in the uh, early to mid 1800s. The 1769 edition is the most popular edition that we have here in America. There are some 1611s floating around, and there are some uh, of the 1800s floating around as well, but the primary one is 1769. Many people confuse the 1769 with the 1611. I have a 1611, and unless you are very well versed in Shakespearean English, you will not be able to correctly read a 1611 translation of the Bible. I'm not saying you can't personally, but I'm saying you must be very well versed in Shakespearean style English. With that said, the Bible is, the, in my opinion, and in my practice for my life, it is the inerrant and fallible, inspired Word of God. It is right and wrong. If the Bible calls it wrong, it is wrong. Okay? That's, uh, that is how right and wrong is determined in my life as a foundation. Now, how does it play out and apply out, apply in ways of social and political significance? Okay. Let me address that. The next document I want to share with you is the Mayflower Compact. Mayflower Compact was written in, on November 11, 1620. It was actually November 21st by the old style calendar. Our calendar shows it as uh, November 11, 1620. Um, and it reads very simply, in the name of God, amen, we whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King, Defender, and Faith and having taken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith and the honor of our king and country a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, uh, by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. And by virtue hereof do enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices, from time to time it shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. In witness thereof, we have hereunto subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November, in the reign of our sovereign Lord King James of England, France, and Ireland, the 18th and of Scotland, the 54th, and a Dominus why is this significant? It says that our nation was colonized under the Christian faith. Now, you may agree, you may disagree, you may choose to accept it or not. I accept it because it was a, it was a covenant that was agreed upon before the colony, because those who colonized the before they left the Mayflower and set foot on land. They, they were saying, this is why we are doing what we're doing. We are establishing um, a new colony to further the work of God, to further the worship of God, and to be able to do it without the persecution of Europe. Okay, that was in 1620. So, the next uh, item of social and political significance and I want to submit to you is this. This is a copy. Well, you may not be able to see it because of the glare. It's a copy of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. This particular one comes from the Heritage Foundation. I have another from Freedom Works. There are many of these floating around out there today. I recommend you get one do not have a copy of the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution of the United States. You need to get it, and you need to read it. You need to understand it. Another document that goes very, very well with this is the Federalist Papers. These are public domain. You can get them many times online, free of charge, just by doing a little searching. Uh, I want to come back and visit with the Declaration of Independence just a moment. It was adopted by Congress in, on July 4, 1770, 
26, as many of you know and realize, uh, it started the um, it, it started the Revolutionary War here in America, which brought about our freedom. Now, those who wrote the Declaration of Independence were the descendants of those who signed the Mayflower Compact. So, do you see the correlation? Their descendants came forth, and they had they they remember. They knew what it was like to be denied freedom and liberty. They knew what it was like to be denied the privilege to worship God. They, they remembered what it was like to have something taken from them. And they knew that it was coming to America, to the colonized uh, continent. They knew that the king was going to try to do in this continent what he had done to the European continent and they were not going to tolerate it. They had been there. They had left it and now they were willing to die to maintain the liberty that they had gotten when they colonized this nation. That should speak volumes to our citizens today. What, what do you base right now? I'm not saying you have to follow me by any means, but I am asking you, what are your convictions? What drives your convictions? Next, after the Declaration of Independence, comes the Constitution of the United States. Now, it was ratified in uh, 1789. Um, it was originally began May 25th, September 87, and what is now called the Independence Hall. Constitution of the United States is a guideline by which we agree to function as a nation. The Federalist Papers are important to the Constitution because the Federalist Papers are a group of newspaper editorials that were sent across the United States to explain to the, to the people what the Constitution was so they would understand what was taking place in Washington and they knew everything that the framers were trying to do and were trying to accomplish. The Constitution is our government. Uh, the people that are elected into office are put up there in order to follow the perimeters that are set down in the Constitution and to, and to properly exercise the direction of this nation within the guidelines of the government, which is the Constitution. Um, the many of us feel that government has so overreached the Constitution that they are no longer they are they are no longer a constitutional government. That they are breaking the, the laws that they are put up there to uphold and to defend. I will not interject that. Uh, I will just simply say that is an observation I have made of many. Um, I think my feelings should be evident by the content of this video. Folks, where do your convictions lie? I see the Bible, the Mayflower Compact, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution of the United States all all tied to one another in a manner that is uh, undeniable. That's me. I, I make my decisions based upon the, these documents. I make my decisions of right and wrong, of uh, social and political matters based upon what is written in these documents that I've just talked about. So when you, when you watch my videos, when you listen to me, on Soul Survivor uh, Broadcasting, you will know and you will understand now where I get my foundation from. Um, many out there will not agree with me. And that's fine. You, you, you are entitled to your thoughts and your views. After all, this Constitution 
guarantees your freedom of speech. The blood of many, many Americans have been spilled and many, many have sacrificed their lives to guarantee you your freedom of speech. Don't let that go unnoticed. YouTubers, I hope that you find and you know where your convictions come from. And I hope that in the days of that lie ahead, in the battles that lie ahead for the constitution of this nation, that your conscience and your convictions will be so based in the fact that you will not allow these documents to be trampled on. I hope you will not allow them to be unchained or unlinked from one another so that our nation can experience the blessings and the benefits that God has intended. I wish you the best. God bless you is my prayer. Until next time, the Prepper's Pastor says so long.